And so what I'm trying to do is create a little uh, model that's parameterized so that you can see how when you um, use control E, it enables you to view these parameters very well. So uh, what I need to do is start with a model. This model is going to be very simple. It has a little pedestal, if you will. or this revolve section that's sitting upon a pedestal like that and it has certain parameters for example this one will be L this length right here will be W you have a diameter here that we'll call D1 You've got a diameter of here, we'll call D2. You've got the height, H, of the revolved section. We have um, this distance, which we'll call C. And we have this distance, which we'll call T. And finally, we have this variable, r. So that is what makes up this model. A little shading. And uh, this, uh, the premise is this, uh, this revolve section happens right in the middle at L over 2 and W over 2. That's kind of obvious. But those are all of our dimensions, L, T, W, D1, D2, H, C, and R. Very simple model. To proceed, the very first thing I do is create a brand new model. And then I go into the expressions editor, control E. And I put in the dimensions. Um, so L, it was an L. Tab 7, enter, T tab 1, enter, W tab 5, enter, D1, tab 1, D2, tab 5.5, H, tab 7, C, tab 1, and R, tab 0.5. So now I've got all these expressions here, and it's all good. Say OK. Now, as you probably recall, there was a platform that was merely a rectangle. And the rectangle looked like this. Oops, let's do this one. There we go. And the dimensions, we have an L. L. We have a T. We have the fact that it is centered. We've got collinear. We've got an extrusion that is symmetric and is the value of W. And we have a revolve that goes on, on that plane there. And the revolve simply looks like this. Like that. We have constraints such as midpoint constraint collinear. We've got a dimension from here to there. That is H. We've got this one as C. We have this one as D1. I'm going to divide it by 2. This one as D2. And we have the fact that it's revolved. 360, 
about here and it's united on and then we have the radius of R. So there is our piece of geometry. Now, here's a really interesting thing. If I select just that entity and say Control E, I'm only shown the expressions. Hold on, let's just try that again. So when I say Control E, it shows me all the expressions. See? P1, yeah, everything. But when I select upon an entity like this and say Control E, it only shows me the expression that's associated with that feature. So that's kind of a little known fact of NX. If I go to the extrude command, say Control E, it's showing me the parameters associated with that body, but nothing else. So that's really nice. Then a lot of people don't realize that there is a little menu right here um, or a column that is the current feature column. So when I double click there, it turns the model to that feature and only that feature is constant. So if I click here, there's the revolve. If I click here, there's the radius. See, it's not a double click, it's a single click. So single clicking in this column is a really nice way to work through some complex model that you have that's many, many features. So those two abilities, the ability to select upon a feature and say Control E and get the expressions that are associated with that and the ability to go through the tree and just click on individual features and, and get the model to uh, do current, uh, current um, make current feature, right? That's, that's the equivalent. When we make current feature, you've got to go all the way to the right-hand mouse button, mouse button and find the command. So those two are really nice. My name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries, and I really appreciate doing these things. Please, if you will, um, subscribe to our channel. Uh, hit the like button and share it. Um, there's many more of these commands where this one comes from. Take a look. Thank you very much.